Back to Capitol Hill. We're going to talk to a couple of Tea Party Republicans, Congressman Tim Hulescamp of Kansas and Congressman Tom Graves of Georgia. Both congressmen voted against the Boehner bill. They join me now from Capitol Hill. Uh, I'm going to call you Tim and Tom. I know both of you, and it, it, it'd be a little nicer if I could do that rather than be more formal and call you a congressman, because both of you are a congressman. Let me start, Tim, with you. You have not voted for even the Boehner bill. You said you do, do not see yourself uh, coming to grips with one of these uh, proposals that are out there. Tell me why not. Well, I don't think it does enough. Uh, we have a very deep problem, and it's not the problem that we don't borrow enough. It's uh, we spent too much. And with these outside credit rating agencies indicating we could suffer a downgrade unless we make enough cuts and make them soon, I'm very concerned about the direction we're heading. Uh, we could have a possible downgrade if either of these plans finally passes. Tom, on your side, is it a fact that you have committed that you would not vote for anything uh, that looks like this deal, or is it just unacceptable to you? Is this a commitment to your voters? Help me understand why it is nothing is going to, to make you say yes to this. Well, actually, I mean, there, there, we did vote for cut, cap, and balance. Both Tim and I both supported that, advocates of that. But when you look at this uh, proposal, both the Boehner plan and this proposal, their solution really doesn't match the enormity of the problem that we face as a nation. So if one is uh, inclined to or their goal is to raise the debt limit, both of those proposals are perfect. It will accomplish that goal. But if the goal is to reduce our debt load and, uh, and our dependency on China, then these are not the proposals for that. We have significant spending cuts today. We have to have caps on federal government spending. And most importantly, we need a balanced budget amendment because I can tell you this place is out of control. It's Washington run wild. And uh, the only way to get spending under control is to allow the American people to have input into it and say, balance your books. I mean, I think a lot of us agree with you that we'd love to see the balanced budget amendment. Interestingly, a lot of the Democrats who are now opposed to it once were for it. But it's not going to happen this week. So do you run the risk of, uh, let's say, not only politically injuring yourself, but the other members of your party, your colleagues, and the possibility of a Republican president, if Republicans get blamed for blowing this thing up? Well, Governor, I, I think uh, there's plenty of blame to go around, and uh, it's not about August 2nd, in my opinion, or even uh, the next election, as the uh, president would uh, like us to believe. This is really about the next generation. Will we defend the ability of our country to meet our obligations? Will we be able to balance our budget? I strongly support a balanced budget amendment, as most Democrats. And so we've been pushing hard to force that to a vote because clearly Washington is broken. The system is broken. And that's why many of us freshmen came up here, because this place is out of control. We want to tackle spending. And we've got to do it now, not sometime next year or next decade. We've got to tackle the overspending problem right now. All right, let's talk that's about right. the pressure that you guys have been under from your own leadership. I mean, clearly, they've probably, you know, put their knee in your back and twisted your arm pretty good and said, look, we need you guys to come along with us. Tell me about the pressure you've had. Well, well, Governor, first of all, I didn't get elected to come up here and do a group hug. We got elected to come up here and offer uh, significant solutions to the difficult challenges we have as a nation. And when you think about what we face right now, and you ask about the balanced budget amendment, if we can't pass it now, we'll never be able to pass it. If we can't pass cuts today with America engaged as they are, we'll never be able to pass these cuts. And so when you're talking about cuts over eight, nine, ten years, and there are trillions of dollars of cuts, look, we can't cut billions today. I don't know how we'll cut trillions next year or the year after that. So let's, let's understand where we are as a nation. We, we have been elected last November to make those difficult choices and decisions today, and now's the time to do it. If we don't do it today, I think we've missed a great historic opportunity. Some of your colleagues who are Tea Party people have voted for uh, the Boehner compromise. They say they're willing to vote for some other form of compromise. You're not. What kind of tension is that causing between you and some of your other Tea Party uh, colleagues? Well, there's just a difference in strategy and a difference in push. And when I look at our numbers and the fact we're $14.3 trillion in debt, none of these plans ever plan on balancing the budget, and most of the cuts are eight, nine, or ten years from now. It's my understanding the cuts that will be made in the first year are less than the post office lost last year. <laughs> you know, that's not enough, and that's not what the American people want. They want significant changes. They recognize the enormity of the problem. Oftentimes, I think my constituents get it better than most of the politicians here in Washington. That's right. Governor, I'll add, my decisions are made. I, I, I make decisions based on my, my philosophy, my conscience, and then my constituents, and then the leadership. 
I don't, I'm not critical of anyone else or their decision or how they vote, but all I know is that I have three children right, that are 8, 11, and 12. I think about their future, and I know the question they're going to be asking me in about 10 years is, Dad, what did you do? And I'm, I'm bound and determined to tell them I did everything I could do to get this nation back on track and on a fiscally solvent course. Are both of you, if Republicans get blamed, I mean, you guys could end up uh, going home after two years. Is that that's an acceptable alternative? Well, I think both of us would agree there'd be great days where we could be elsewhere. And uh, this is not a, a, a job we both dreamed of having. We just want to step up the plate. And I represent 700,000 people. But that's, that's who we respond to. That's who we have to answer to. We need to change Washington. We have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to do that. That's why we're pushing so hard. Again, if we can't make those cuts now, if we can't find a way to balance our budget now, when can we? And I think there's a tremendous opportunity. And we're going to keep pushing as hard as we can. All right. And, Governor, there's certainly life after politics. But when you think about uh, yes, you know, my is, three Tom. children that I mentioned, <laughs> you, 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 you <laughs> demonstrated that. Uh, you know, and my three children, and, and, and I want to be able to look them square in the eye and the American people and say, you know what, Washington has not been telling you the truth, but we're willing to stand here and tell the truth now. And we're willing to make the difficult decisions today. It's not Washington as usual as far as Tim and I are concerned or many of our colleagues. So uh, whatever the next election holds, it holds, but uh, we're going to make the tough decisions today. Congressman, thank you both. Tim Hulescamp and Tom Graves. <laughs>